Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, with our main topic today. Well, uh, today we are going uh, to uh, discuss uh, in this uh, interview uh, today uh, um, uh, the um, we are going to discuss the anniversary of the birthday of uh, the late President uh, Muhammad Anwar Sadat. Um, he was uh, born on the 25th of December of the year 1918. Uh, more than 100 years have uh, past and he ruled Egypt uh, during um, the 70s um, since 1970 until uh, until uh, uh, 1981 and uh, we are going to discuss um, um, uh, his life uh, his early life um, his character as uh, the president and um, uh, he is very well known as uh, the man of uh, war and peace uh, and he received uh, the Nobel Prize uh, for peace. Uh, to shed more light on uh, the um, life of uh, the late President Muhammad Anwar Sadat, we have the pleasure to host this morning Dr. Ahmad Osama, member of the Egyptian Council for Foreign Affairs. Uh, good morning, uh, Dr. Osama. Good morning. Dr. Osama, uh, of course, we all know, and most of the people, of course, in Egypt and uh, the Middle East, and most of the people around the world knows uh, that uh, President um, uh, Muhammad Anwar al-Sadat uh, was very well known for being uh, the man of uh, peace and war. But before we discuss this, uh, let's have a look at the early years uh, 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 of uh, his life. It's a great honor to talk about uh, our legend, the President Muhammad Anwar Sadat of Egypt. Um, he is one of the greatest presidents and leaders all over the world and history in my personal opinion. And even I am, as an Egyptian, very proud when I was in any uh, conferences or uh, travels uh, abroad to find that even the world respect our president Muhammad Anwar Sadat. Uh, God bless him. His uh, very early beginning was uh, in a tough life. He was from a very poor family. His father was um, a, nurse, a nursery. Uh, uh, assisting a British doctor and his mother was uh, from Sudan yes. and uh, he was very proud of her, the personality of his grandmother of his father that she created them and leading the family so he was uh, knowing and appreciating well the role of the women in the village how they lead and build, build the personality of the Egyptian people and the youth. Mm. So um, he started with this, he started to, uh, to learn uh, his education uh, with a very limited resource. He was living in his village within uh, Mitabulkum and they moved to Cairo. He known well the uh, suffering of being a poor person and the differentiations between the classes of people uh, and discriminations in that time and in the same time Egypt was occupied by the British and uh, a lot of revolutions trying started from 1919 with Saad Zaghloul and Al Waft party Yes. working on the independence on Egypt. So he started to be involved in such secretive groups to work against uh, the occupation and he had a dream of Egypt as an independence um, country yes. uh, and free country. But what shaped his uh, or affected his uh, character uh, since he was young? Uh, what's affected his uh, personality during uh, all of the books we read about it and the documentaries and a lot of interviews with him personally, he was um, um, affected by um, the environment of Egypt in that time. 
the most of the youth generation in this period was very involved in politics following what's going around the uh, negotiations and discussions and the political crisis in Egypt. It was under the kingdom uh, leadership, yes. uh, but in the same time with uh, influence and great influence and control from the British Empire. This is a part. Second is the, the, the poverty and the people, they don't have much leverage to enjoy their life. And as a villager, from a village, it gives him to be patient, yes. how to stay stable under and work under pressure. And he was um, um, adopted, uh, he was uh, with uh, Aziz al-Masri and many uh, uh, political and uh, military leaders yes. uh, trying to work against the British and they doing, did like uh, alliance with the Germans trying to replace them but they told the German in that time we are not uh, looking for release Egypt from the British occupied to so get a, he, he a German the, occupied. He had this uh, revolutionary uh, activities or ideas uh, since he uh, joined the Egyptian ar army. Yes, Isn't and uh, yes, and before, and his from the early beginning of his uh, uh, as a young boy, yes. he was noticing this, and uh, the the time of that time with Saad Zaghloul, Mustafa Nahas leading the the, yes, the, the he was aware of he was the aware, and the situation wasn't um, solved, and yes. uh, the the king was against Al Waft Party because they have the po po yes. population with them. And at the same time, they, they uh, are usually changing the government's uh, um, fraud in the elections. The, the situation was very complicated for the Egyptian society. al Waft in that time was named as the party of people with the uh, white coals and uh, the blue uh, jalabi who is representing them, but he didn't join the political parties. He was working um, with secretive group uh, under the ground. And he joined the military um, academy after uh, with the recommendation of the British doctor uh, to be in there. And he, from this point, th he started to get to know uh, Nasser and to work together for uh, yes. the revolution. Yes. Uh, so what about uh, his uh, role uh, uh, with the, um, uh, the uh, free uh, officers uh, during the revolution of the 1952? Um, they was uh, fighting to get the high positions to be yes. the ministers and the yes. vice presidents. And he uh, read the scene very smart and uh, prefer to have a, a low profile in for a long time he was uh, the head of al jumhuriya news uh, letter yes. and he got only the po political position he was the president of the parliament he was the head of the parliament uh, during the 60th so he was trying to avoid being involved on uh, people trying to get the power and many privileges for themselves. And uh, surely they have with him yes. uh, 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 another role uh, in the next step. Yes, yes. So uh, when, when, um, when he uh, took, uh, came uh, to office uh, in uh, the year 1970, how did he uh, prepare for uh, the October uh, war? He is uh, all the time... Of course, he had the experience uh, um, of being uh, the vice president uh, since uh, President Ab Gamal Abdel Nasser. Was it? Uh, for, a for a short time. For a short while. Uh, for, uh, yeah, he, he, he wasn't a vice president for a long time. Uh, it's, it was a, a very short yes. time. Uh, he was a visionary. And uh, he is looking always 
as a military man and he yes. as a man who belonging to the military of Egypt same time he was a politician by nature he was working politically and involved in many things on the ground so after the uh, 1967 um, uh, we, ca we can't deny that there are, uh, uh, the, the, the head of uh, the military intelligence and uh, after that uh, the, the second man in the army was uh, uh, Muhammad Sadiq okay. and they working on uh, the uh, preparing for the war he was trying through his relations to do a diplomatic uh, relations negotiations. with the negotiations with the United States. And before yeah. his being a president, by the way, in 1968, after yeah. uh, uh, the American uh, Foreign Affairs uh, Minister, Rogers, uh, started an initiative for peace named Rogers Initiative. Yes to Egypt, between Egypt and Israel, and Nasser was looking to approve and, and to accept uh, this uh, initiative, yeah. but the other side didn't um, approve it. So after he's trying to get his army and the military be well and ready for the situation, he uh, ha got a very good relationship with uh, Henry Kissinger. He's still alive right now, and he's still uh, uh, he's a visionary and uh, one of the very smartest politicians yeah. um, all over the world. Yeah. So uh, President Sadat found out found out that no peace. If you want peace, you have to be ready for war. Yes. And he was advised you have to move forward a step to to have an opportunity to negotiate yeah. so he started to plan to the war with uh, the heroes of Egypt uh, he was um, absorbing all the pressure from the Egyptian society against him and before the the, the war from the lobby of Nasser's men 1971 he got rid of all of them and uh, he started to to work with his team and even if he had he feel like he doesn't need someone to be with him he he was he was working by um a really up clever extra, a very extraordinary clever personality yes. and vision yes. so he uh, after the 1973, he started to work on peace. Yes. And he lived for peace and died for peace. Yes. Yes. Uh, after the war and the victory of Egypt, he was very brave to decide to go to the Knesset. Yes. To visit Israel. Yes. And he announced this in front of the parliament and to the world. No one can in that time realize or even imagine that this point could happen from an that Arab leader. That he was able to bring back uh, uh, the rest of uh, the Egyptian uh, lands. Yes. And he was negotiator, very good, good negotiator. negotiator. Clever one. Yes. And knowing how to do the compromise. Yeah. He was uh, strong enough to, uh, to, to find all of the Arab leaders cutting the relations with Egypt and named him like the betrayer and traitor for the, the, the Palestinians. But it's not true because yeah. all of the documentaries, all of the documents, he, he invited the Palestinians to get in and to, to yes. come to the MENA House yes. uh, conference and to start negotiate for themselves. And even when he started the war, he told them, I want you to, to be part of it, to find the reason to get into the negotiation because I will discuss for peace not only to get 
back the Egyptian lands, but even f the, your territories. Yes. But the Arabs didn't follow him in that time. And I think now... But they recognized after this. After a long... That he was right. After a long time now, they know that he was right. And now we yes. find all of the Arab countries trying to build peace with in initiatives, processes going on, and every day we find new news. So they lost the opportunities to do it early. In that time, it, was, it could be better for the Arab countries and for the region and for yes. the Palestinians. Yes. Uh, c conflict. Yes. Yeah. So he was really uh, a legend. He was uh, a pioneer. He was uh, very brave. He tried to, to 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 get people in Egypt more freedom in democracy. Yes. By started uh, balancing with uh, the political parties as a, as a part of change because usually after. Um, a uh, uh, military uh, coup, uh, the 1952 revolution, uh, they must leave the, everything in their hands, that's as the book of politics said, and after that, uh, they name it uh, like Decta Demo, like balancing yes. the situation, giving some freedom, but under control. But the mis mistake was with the Brotherhood. Yes. He, want to, he wanted to uh, balance against the communists uh, raid in uh, Egypt, absorbed by Nasser uh, era, yes. and to give the young generations in the, in the universities to, and the syndicates to, to work on it. Yes. And this is the big mistake he paid this penalty and even Egypt paid the penalty of the brotherhood and the uh, generations of extremists and um, the, the 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 radical groups who started the 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 the, the wave of terrorists now and we find now the uh, jihad, Jama'a Islamiyah, uh, Taliban, Qaeda, all of these radical groups, they were trying to say they killed him and they were trying always to promote themselves to the society like they are Islamic people who are looking for uh, f free o o freedom of yes. Al-Aqsa. Yes. They didn't do anything about this issue. Yes. They just go to Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan, uh, with compromises with other yeah. global powers and destroying their countries under the name of religion. I thank you very much for your time and for your valuable information, Dr. Ahmed Osama, the member of uh, the Egyptian Council for uh, Foreign Affairs. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I will leave you with a short break. Uh, after this, I leave you with my colleague, Hala al -Hamalaw.